Uh, good, mo good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to my little chit chat here. Should be nice and fun and informal. I'm going to try to keep it tutorial esque, but um, also just kind of be a sort of a small look into, you know, a, a sort of a daily exercise. I, I, it's kind of what I called it as a, a daily design warm up because this is the type of thing that I would do sort of regularly for fun and just to kind of, you know, get my brain moving. So, you know, we're not going to make any specific pre planned thing, but. Um, so there, there will be a live um, portion of course, but um, I guess I should also say, hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com. Um, uh, so yeah, some, some of you may know me. Um, I, I know some of, some of you may not, some of you may. Um, I know that many of you do because you've been coming up to me at the conference saying how excited you were for this. And I responded with, great, like what do you want to see? Because it's been, uh, it's been mostly just kind of planned in my head up until um, now, so like I said, we're going to be doing sort of a live tutorial and we're going to be making something sort of similar to what you're seeing on the screen now, which is um, a project I did for 36 Days of Type several years ago. So this is an older project, but I've done a lot of similar ones. This is just the only one that I have nicely compiled into a long thing that I could put on the screen and uh, draw your attention while I ramble on for less than six minutes. Um, um, so. So yeah, I was going to you know dive right into that, but fortunately I'm going on the last day, so I was able to watch some other talks and decided it would probably be good to talk just a little bit about myself. Um, so I guess before I go, by show of hands, have, has anyone watched the, my tutorials before, or are there a lot of people? Okay, so mostly people who have seen them, some who haven't. Thank you for coming. Um, but yeah, so you know m most of the you know, ways people find me are through, you know, YouTube or Instagram or something like that. Um, but that's really only about 10% of, you know, what I do. I'm not, uh, you know, official YouTuber. Um, but my background is in industrial design, which if you don't know, is um, designing products, like physical products, like, you know, every everything around you, water bottles, monitors, mice, things like that. Um, it's not designing like conveyor belts and stuff for industries, which I had to explain to many people in college that that's what industrial design was. I would call it product design, but the uh, UX and UI designers in Silicon Valley have mostly claimed the title of product designer. Um, but I really like industrial design because it's kind of like, you know, I, I really liked art, but I also like, um, you know, practical things. You know, art is a little bit too big of a box. Um, it's too open-ended for me. so. Um, you know, one thing that's really good about industrial design and just design in general versus art is that it's, um, you know, th there's kind of constraints. So you, there's a lot of room for creativity, but you can also, um, you know, have, have some things to kind of keep your, um, you know, keep things bounded. Um, so, you know, over my time in school, I kind of, you know, discovered furniture design and architecture. And, you know, I, you know, I, I find those as sort of two, like, really perfect areas for, design because they have very specific constraints, um, you know, but you think of it like a chair, for example, and, you know, it's got a very, very specific use, you know, it needs to fit a person and they can sit in it, but, you know, every day people are designing chairs and, you know, that's fascinating to me, like, why are we still designing chairs? Like, you think we would have found one by now that was good, um, but it's just fun to design chairs because it's, it's just like a really unique, you know, problem to try to solve. Um, so anyways, the other 90% of what I'm doing that's not, you know, YouTube and Instagram is, um, you know, mostly doing freelance work of some sort or another, um, kind of working directly with clients to, um, you know, because of my background in industrial design, I'm mostly doing, um, you know, stuff for product launches, um, product animation, things like that. I, I, you know, at times will kind of stray away from that, but sort of continuously try to pull myself back into sort of my roots and what I still like, which is, um, you know, physical products and industrial design things. Um, so I, yeah, and that is because I like constraints. Like I was saying, you know, that it needs to be a box. Um, so one thing that freelance work is really good for, of course, is having a deadline. Um, you know, as soon as somebody decides to pay me to do something, you know, first of all, I immediately don't want to do it at that point. Um, but also, you know, I know I have a deadline. It's a good way to get a project done um, because if I don't have that, then um, it can be difficult to, you know, I'm sure many of you have done personal projects and started them and never finished them because, you know, there's, you don't really have to ever finish it. Um, so you really have to 
push yourself to do that, but um, freelance work is good for that. And um, it also allows me to keep a finger on the industry, so when I'm creating things like YouTube tutorials, I can sort of know, you know what clients are actually asking for and you know what those conversations actually are so that you know when I'm presenting educational content I can sort of talk about it in you know real world scenarios and like you know this is a situation that I actually went through um, so you know most of the work ends up being product visualization stuff but I've also um, had the pleasure of working on a lot of like super secret more like abstract projects um, so the company Niantic that makes Pokemon Go I've worked uh, directly with them a few times for developing some... Should we watch the donut tutorial next? Um, I, I was going to replay that, but I'll also just switch over to... This is like a very short reel just for the top of my website, but this shows some other um, kind of more recent work in the, that's not the 36 Days type stuff. Um, but yeah, Niantic, you know, working with them very early on to kind of bring a 3D eye to, you know, a new app that they were developing. Um, also um, working with the architecture firm Gensler um, on sort of developing sort of these digital physical scenarios um, for this, I don't know if some of you have heard the, the line in Saudi Arabia, it's like this new crazy, it's hit all the design magazines, it's of questionable practic practicality, but um, you know, working with them to you know, figure out Kind of, it was mostly just for presentation, but you know the way Blender comes into that is that it's a very fast way for me to iterate, um, and you know a lot of the work that I did for them and ended up being using a lot of the exact same techniques and kind of looking like sort of the same style as the 36 Days of Type because it's a really fast way to sort of present concepts and spaces and structures without getting too uh, bogged down by details and things like that. Um, so. I think that's pretty much enough about me, unless uh, I'll probably go ahead and get into it. But um, yeah, I, I really like Blender, and I'm going to walk you through just sort of a little bit of how I would make something like those 36 Days of Type animations. So I'm just going to minimize that, and here we are in Blender. And um, we can keep this, I, I'm, I'm going to regret saying it, but you know we can keep this as casual as possible like you know if while I'm doing something if anybody has a question about you know why I'm doing it I'll try to keep talking the whole time it's hard for me not to but um if uh if there's something I'm doing and somebody wants me to kind of elaborate on that while I'm going then um then we can do that but here we have the default queue as you may know and I'm going to you know usually when I'm starting off something like this um in the case of architecture you know starting with sort of a little bit of a you know, there's no floor plan, there's no real design here, but um, we will delete the default cube, though I'm almost positive. I'll add an, I'll add, I'll probably add another one later at some point, but um, we'll just use a plane for now. Um, so we're just gonna scale that up a little bit. And so there's really, and, and I guess kind of while I'm doing this, I'll try to sort of explain why we're doing this, but you know, I try to use as few sort of base elements as possible. Um, you know, that's going to be end modifiers. So we're going to be using like the bevel modifier, for example, um, the solidify modifier, skin modifier. Those are really easy ways to sort of build geometry um, quickly that you can create detail with. But it's, it's really very, um, you know, you know, you have a, you have a very simple base geometry. So it's easy to sort of iterate quickly. Um, so bevel modifier is great for that. Then the next thing I might add is a solidify modifier. Basically, yeah, just ways to sort of create detail, very easy. Um, so I'll try to stay with this being my front view. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of sort of building out some shapes here, maybe. Just thinking about what might look interesting. <coughs> Pardon me. So that could be our, our floor, for example. Um, and then, you know, maybe to do a roof, we would just select this, bring that up, maybe a defined increment. I loved in a Midge, the Mantissa talk yesterday, he loved the nice even increments because that's very helpful. Um, so we'll, I did automatically add my quick favorite, Auto Smooth, to do that. Um, I'll try to keep the technical details to a minimum since I su suppose most of you probably are relatively familiar with this software. 
So auto smooth is in the normal section here, um, but I, it's like the only quick favorite I ever use. Yeah, I just, just like this morning, I put it on here. Oh yeah, is that true? Shade auto smooth. Yeah, so this computer is running uh, 3.4 alpha, which kind of terrified me because I was like, does, does, don't those ones crash or something like that? But um, maybe that's a new thing. I don't update my Blender like super regularly because most of what I'm doing is very much not on the, the bleeding edge. I know a lot of people have like described my style as simple and it wasn't really by choice. It's kind of just like, I don't know how to do anything else in Blender. Like I definitely haven't touched geometry nodes ever. So and they're like, your style is so simple. I'm like, great, it's because I don't know how to do anything else. Um, so let's just start with that for now. We'll expand this over time. I kind of want to quickly get to a point where I have sort of the building blocks, sort of the Legos of um, this piece. So um, the next Lego I might do is our beloved should have been default cube. Um, so I'll just, you know, I'm going to use this as kind of a, maybe like a, um, like a window area, start thinking about some walls. So I'll go into my x-ray view there. And then maybe we bring this back. This can come over. And you know, at some point, it's good to start thinking about maybe like what angle you're going to be looking at this from, so that you can, you know, you're not putting detail in somewhere where you don't necessarily need it. So you know, that's something I might do once I have some very basic forms built out. But you know, now I'm kind of looking at this. I'm thinking like, oh, maybe this is going to be sort of a covered outdoor porch area. This could be like a second or first story porch, maybe this is like a living room. Again, the idea with this is to kind of be inspired by architecture and, you know, sort of creating unique shapes. It's really just for fun, you know, it's not, there's no real um, purpose or anything that this needs to serve, but so that we can start thinking about it a little bit more like architecture, I might add in a wireframe modifier just so that we can have sort of a, a frame to the, our little house there. Um, now, I like to do this with, um, I would turn off replace original so that we still have our original and it is not replaced. Um, and I'll add like maybe a material to this I'll call glass. And then so that I can see, and I don't know how to turn caps lock off on, I think it's off now, on, off, okay. Um, with this material, you know, just because I am gonna be working mostly just, you know, in the viewport display, it's a good idea to go ahead and add in some, um, you know, just materials, viewport materials so that you can kind of see what you're doing here. And glass is blue, as we all know. And I'll add in another material. So this is one thing you can do that's cool on the wireframe modifiers, add in a second slot, which um, I'll just call black. I never like to call materials by a color name because I always end up changing it and then it just confuses me later, but um, I think we'll keep it black. So um, in the viewport display, and you know, we will go into rendered view and maybe even do like a little bit of animation or something. Kind of depends on um, how this is looking, what you guys are interested in. Um, but we'll just keep moving along here. So if that's black, we can go into the, the wireframe modifier and then do a material offset. And that'll just get that. And you know, very quickly, we already have like basically you know, what we would need to make a house. We've got some you know, walls, windows. Um, and the cool thing about working like this with the wireframe modifier is that now I can just go in. I can actually turn on this so I can see it in edit mode. But um, you know, I can just add in another little pane right there. And you know, I'm sort of you know, again, why do you need a pane right there? I don't know, it just, you know, this area felt blank, so, you know, maybe we add in a little bit of detail there. Um, now, you know, I would like to think that maybe we can get into this room, so maybe we delete that face. That's looking cool. Um, you know, what could we do next? Maybe thinking about some other walls. So I have this as one object now. I'm gonna duplicate it, and this is a thing that I like to do a lot, it's just steel geometry, so, you know, that's another advantage of working this way with modifiers is that once you kind of have these objects built with some of those modifiers you're going to be reusing, it's very easy to then um, make new objects that have the same modifiers already on them without having to re-add them. So uh, once I kind of duplicate that, just kind of select the inverse, delete everything, and then I will, now I have this object, which I can make as the walls, and it looks like I didn't get everything there. Delete those faces. Okay, so now I have this wall object. You know, maybe this one, I don't bevel the vertices, but instead bevel the edges um, so that I can, you know, maybe bring this part 
down a little bit so it's not intersecting there. And then, you know, maybe this becomes a little bit of like a, a nook or something like that. You know, maybe this is the garage. I don't remember what's the front of the house. You know, this, okay, so we'll call that the garage area, but you know, it's feeling a little bit big, so maybe this is like, maybe that's the garage up here. And then we're thinking about, okay, now we've got maybe more private area in the back here, so adding that, maybe extruding something out. Whoop. So we've got sort of another room. And with that, and maybe we make the floor plan just a little bit bigger. Not sure what that area is, but looks nice. Maybe our entrance would be somewhere somewhere around there. So if that's our garage, we like close that off. Something like that, I think it looks cool. And then, you know, another thing I like to add a lot of is like little, little like fences and stuff. Maybe we, maybe we do that as um, we add, you know, maybe another floor here. So we can bring that up. We start to get this sort of three-story tiered structure looking kind of cool. Um, you know, and one of the advantages with the 36 days of type project, again, coming back to constraints, is that, you know, you know each one each day has to have, um, it has to be in the form of a letter. So, you know, that alone is a good constraint. Um, and, you know, one way I was able to do all those projects so quickly is because I was, um, you know, I would sort of build this base file that just had, like, a window piece, a floor piece, a wall piece. And then, you know, I could just jump right into Blender and, you know, just start, you know, shaping things out. Um, so I'm going to duplicate that. Actually, usually I like to put that as the same object in case I change things. So let's go into this object, Shift D to bring it up. And, you know, maybe so that we're not reusing too much, let's just delete everything except one of those faces. You know, maybe this is the bedroom, so we, you know, want a little bit of visibility there, but we want some privacy up further on the wall. So we can duplicate this, bring it up. It's feeling good. You know, maybe this is a uh, another private balcony. So we can bring this down. A little bit of like a wall looking out. Maybe this is the private office where you, you spend all day working on Blender. Wouldn't that be a dream? Um, does anybody have any uh, specific areas that they love in their house that we could consider adding? Adding here, house, apartment, dwelling, a kitchen. The kitchen, the kitchen's in there somewhere. I don't, you know, we're definitely not going to be modeling any sinks. But um, that's that's another cool thing about this is it's like, you know, you you can go in and, and you know continuously add more and more and more detail. Um, you know, but the idea here is is like you know let's just rough out some big big forms, things like that. Um, this shape is looking a little interesting. Now Now might be the time when I would go in and, you know, depending on if you're gonna do an animation or something, obviously you need to be considering more sides, but um, maybe now would be a good time to go ahead and start thinking about, you know, what angle we wanna look at this from so that we can kind of be adding details in the right places. And, you know, if, if this is gonna be a still image at the end of the day, you know, I wanna, I just kinda wanna create an interesting composition that like, your eyes sort of drawn to the middle. You don't have any kind of weird lines lining up with each other. Um, and you just kind of, you know, it's, it's supposed to like feel like architecture, but really you're, you, you like need to remember, like there doesn't necessarily need to be a kitchen. You know, there doesn't need to be a master bedroom. You don't need to have a door to get into some particular area. So, you know, it, it should look upon immediately looking like at it like a um, house or something like that. But, but that's one thing that you like have to, consistently kind of disconnect yourself from is like it's not a house it's inspired by a house but it's really it's an image like you I know I said I, I I don't like to call myself an artist but you know what you're creating here really is more um, it is kind of a little bit more art um, but so let's start thinking about that so the way I usually like to set up my cameras is by adding in an empty in the in the center of my scene and then just making it really big so I can see it and then binding my camera to that. So I'll press Alt-G to move it to the middle, Alt-R to make it pointing straight down, and then RX-90. And then just kind of bring it out a little ways. And maybe we make that a little bit bigger so we can see it. Viewport display size. Blender 3.4 Alpha is holding up very well so far, but I have not yet saved, so let's do that. Um, what should we call our house? 
Beacon Home 1, because there will be a Beacon Home 2 in a few minutes, probably. Um, all right, so let's bind this to that. I don't think I did that yet. Control-P, keep transform. And then I'll just kind of pull out another view here. And then I'll go into my camera view on this one. And then just sort of, the reason I do that is just because I kind of want to keep things centered in my scene. And like, you know, if you're, a lot of times I'll just fly around to like find like what angle I want to look at. But with this, you know, I kind of want to keep it, you know, maybe isometric looking, um, but just, you know, finding sort of a unique angle here, knowing that my camera is right there in the center. So, you know, right now, I think I was kind of designing it from, the, from this angle anyways. That's looking pretty good. Um, and maybe we consider making this image a square. So we could, it doesn't really matter because we probably won't render it, but 1500 by 1500 is a great dimension. I, it's not, I like, I never do like 1920 by 1920 or those numbers are just like, it's just, you know, I like square round numbers. Um, so 1500 by 15. A lot of people also ask, how do you get the quality so high for Instagram? And I, I don't do anything. I literally just save it as a JPEG and upload it. I, I guess it just comes down to the resolution. Um, you know, let, maybe let's move this camera up a little bit. Um, okay, so also thinking about the shapes, um, not just the shapes of the object, uh, we will be rendering this eventually. So not a bad idea to already start thinking maybe a little bit about lighting. Um, now you could put this in a little bit of an environment. You know, maybe we put it like on a hill or something like that. And I'm going to kind of working ahead here so that our hill isn't too, so their house stays on the hill. I'm going to add a solidified, or yeah, subdivision surface to that, shade it smooth. Um, and then maybe we should actually add in a little bit of a backdrop there so it's not, can't see anything. We would typically light this with a beautiful HDRI from our friends at Polyhaven we heard from last night. And we might also do that, but I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. Now this computer doesn't have a GPU, so we're seeing what Midge did yesterday. Well, he was using his laptop, but we're not getting anywhere near that complex, so I think we should be good. Um, so for lighting, I don't know when it came out, maybe 2.8-ish, but the sky texture is just absolutely phenomenal. It looks really good. Um, we do need to rid ourselves of the void looming behind our home, though. Um, and that is going to be in the clip end. I don't tend to work in real scale, which is funny for someone who does a lot of product animation. But uh, it's probably better if I did. Sun size we can bring up a little bit. And now might be a good time to be thinking about the actual materials, not just the viewport materials. Let's spin our sun around until we've got a little bit of a better angle there. Now, I've been watching some videos on this, but the sun's strength always seems super high, um, but I like to keep the sun intensity a little high, and then I think exposure is maybe what you're supposed to be working with there, but again, we're not going to necessarily talk about what you're supposed to do. We're going to talk about what Derek does. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit of material to this just so that we can, again, you know, the, re the reason I'm kind of moving into render view now, I don't feel done with the house. It doesn't look good. We're going to do more to it, but, you know, before you get too hung up. That's kind of the whole point of, you know, this is like, you know, designed to delight yourself. Um, you, you don't want to get, you know, zoomed in creating like a little tiny doorknob or something if it's going to be on the back of your house. Um, you know, so keep keeping things big and, you know, in that essence, like I said, because we are going to be rendering this, going ahead and adding in some lighting um, because, you know, the shadows and stuff are obviously going to be part of the image here. So we want to have, um, you know, something that feels um, you know, compositionally good with shadows too. So let's add in a, let's drop the roughness and let's add in some solidity. Oh, we will need to add in solidity, but I'll turn, it, turn the transmission up. And just, you know, this is not a realistic way to do things, but I'm gonna just turn the alpha down a tad. And you know, maybe we could tint the windows just a tad. Actually, so I've, there's, there's one, um, actually I did it here. One thing I like to do, I did it on the project that was in the talk here, but um, if you guys want to see it, I'll, I'll do like, this is like a really cool thing, like another sort of detail, it's just a procedural gradient texture, but just kind of another very simple thing that you can add to 
just add in visual interest. And then lastly would be, yeah, something like text. Um, so I'm gonna go back into my file here. Let's, you know, a lot of times I'll do these panes with um, skin modifiers so that I can work more with bevels and things like that and get a more rounded frame and so that I can add a solidify. I haven't found a good way to have these windows be solid but also have um, the wireframe not create like duplicates and stuff. Um, but I don't like to do that until, because at that point you have two separate objects, so I don't like to do that until my shape is sort of more finalized. Uh, but maybe, I, I did mention adding a railing, maybe I add that um, using the skin modifier, so I'll do that. But there's our basic window frame there. Let's add in maybe a shader here, black. Maybe make it a tad bigger. So that's looking cool, looking nice. Maybe we should go ahead and add a material for this too, even though we'll probably just leave it white for now. Um, I'll just call that like base material. Um, now I'm not loving my, my hilltop background here. Maybe it's cause, so the traditional style for something like this, I feel like would be more so um, isometric view, but um, you can also just use a super long focal length, but maybe we do orthographic view and just change our scale. And that would be so that I can delete this hill because I don't think I like it anymore. Maybe I do like it, but we'll get rid of this. Delete those vertices and then we'll just scale this out. <clears throat> Give ourselves some viewport. So now we have our little house on the hill. Our you know shadow being cast there is very long. So it might be a good idea to kind of bring the sun elevation up a little bit, which would, oh no, going dark. Maybe the sun intensity needs to come down. Could bring the size of the sun up a tad. And I think part of the reason, okay, so I'm getting, I'm getting light going through the windows, but I'm a little bit too blocked out with the, uh, with the floor I have there. So, you know, maybe so that we don't have that coming out so much, we could sort of bring that in a little bit. And yeah, so maybe now I'll add like that little railing I was talking about. Now I might do that the same way, kind of stealing some geometry here. So I'm um, like, let's press shift D to duplicate this. And I'll just bring it up a little bit. P to separate it by selection. And instead of beveling the, oh, well, this one already has the vertices being beveled, which is great. So I'll, um, I'll turn off the solidify modifier here. And then I'm going to add in a skin modifier usually a good idea to save when you're working with a skin modifier a lot, but skin modifier is nice because, yeah, it, it's like a super easy way to add detail that is, um, you're just working with one vertex. You can just move it around and you can add poles and pillars and things like that, railings. Um, so love the um, skin modifier for that. It's great too because you can create different like size detail. You know, in this case, I think I wanna match it to what I have on the, um, the window panes there, but like you know, we can move this down, and then we sort of have a little bit of a railing here. You could add some glass to that as well. Maybe we don't want it over here, so we can edge slide that back a little bit. Hopefully, nobody goes on that part of the balcony and falls off. But that looks nice, and that could even get a white material or leave the black again. Starting to think about sort of the whole visual composition of that. Um, I'm not loving like this little intersection here. I could be changing my camera angle, but um, you know, maybe we pull that back and that becomes like a little sitting area. And you know, while we're at it, I wasn't, I was gonna keep it mostly to architecture, but since I love uh, chairs so much, maybe we make a little chair for this guy. And I'm gonna bring that in just, so one hotkey that I use a ton is like frame selected, which I actually also bound to a button on this mouse. Um, so when I have a big object in the background like that, if I frame selected, it's gonna frame the big object as well. Um, but this is looking good. I think, what did I say? I wanted to add a little chair. So let's press, let's add in a cube. And once again, could have been our default cube. Make it roughly chair size here. Um, let's scale it down a little bit. And very simple chair. Again, just little tiny details so that we have some fun here. Trying to tell a little bit of a story with our, our object here. Let's add in a bevel modifier. 
Bevel modifiers were great for basically adding procedural edge loops if you're gonna do um, like a subdivision, for example, afterwards. So love to use those. And then, oh, okay, so here's our little chair. So now thinking about our story, let's put this on a second story. This is where the adults go to relax in the afternoon. So that that's in the right place. Okay, so we have a little, little chair there. Okay, so that's an, our nice little balcony area. Um, the shape of this is kind of disturbing me, so you know maybe we pull this in a little bit. Maybe close that off. Maybe think a little bit more about our driveway here. Maybe that's our driveway. Um, you know, this could be our, maybe we pull that out a little bit. Maybe make this like a separate pad. And this could be like a second portion of the house or something like that. Pull that in a little bit. I think I'm getting over my edge here of the, uh, my ground plane. We might be good. Oh, I think I moved it up a little bit. Put that back down. So maybe that's another area. Um, now, if, you, if we were feeling good about the shapes of you know, some of these objects on top, that might be where I go in and actually make this like a separate, you know, maybe if we wanted this like window to be rounded, for example, we, would, we could go in and add in a, um, you know, bevel modifier to this. And then, you know, bring the, the size on that up a little bit. Probably wanna put that before the wireframe so that now we have, so this is where it gets a little bit nasty with the wireframe modifier. So we've got like a little bit too many segments there, but like, let's say we want it, we still want the windows to look like that. So that's where I would probably go in and you know switch those over to a skin modifier to add some of those details. So you know maybe we ditch the ditch the wireframe there, duplicate this, and then just add in a um, a skin modifier. But with the skin modifier, just delete everything except for the um, only faces I think, and then we'll change the material on that to our little black material by removing the other one. And then let's um, mark roots and scale this down so that now the, the skin modifier, and actually, so this, this works a little different with the panes. I think I want to delete the ones that aren't the sides so that I still get the, so I get the bevel on the top and the bottom. So let's delete these edges. Let's remark our roots. Okay, cool. Make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. I guess you can't see that one up top anyways, but, and then you know you could add back in your details there on the ends or something where you wanted to create more detail. Um, so that, that's kind of cool, liking that. Ooh. Connect these back up. I think I'm ruining my bevel there. Maybe the wireframe is a better way to go. Um, okay, so maybe adding a little bit of color to this, I could show you how we add in that like gradient texture, for example. So going into the shader editor, very simple here. Let's just do a control T. So one of the reasons that I would want the bevel modifier, or sorry, I would want this to be separate geometry is so that I can add in a solidify this so that the glass looks a little bit better. So let's add in a solidify to that. Just bring it up a little bit. And then for the texture, I would use a gradient texture like I mentioned. So let's change that to a, a gradient texture, and then you always have to figure out which way it needs to go. But let's use our Node Wrangler add-on and check that out. So it happens to be going the right way. That's beautiful. It never, it never, uh, it never is going the right way. It's going the right way, though. Um, OK, so connecting that back up. So now I have sort of this tinted window effect. Now, when you're doing like transparency materials, um, I always, you know, you want the color to be not too saturated, but super bright. So, and I think this is working. Oh, this is working on the UVs now, so that's why it was working properly, which is pretty good. Let's unwrap that. Probably shouldn't have done it. Maybe, so I wanna do it on generated. Oh, that's gonna be, so this is where it's all, always gets very confusing. Okay, maybe we should leave it on UV. And then let's actually look at our UVs and just make them all, oh gosh, make them all facing the same way. So, 
or actually, let's, uh, <laughs> if we do generate it, but then make these separate objects, then we can, let's do separate by loose parts. Then it should be working individually and I can do my rotation the way that I want to do it, 90 degrees. Now for glass, if you wanna make it like super bright looking, one thing that you can do is add in, like, like bump this value up to like a two or something. And I'll give it a lot more pop, I guess would be the uh, technical term for that. But getting back to our, let's see, the, the design of our house is feeling a little lacking. Maybe we could add in um, some more railings and things like that. Um, you know, I might add that just right there. And then because we're working procedurally, you know, it's obviously very easy to um, just sort of take pieces that you already have, and kind of move them into the right area. Oops. So there's another little railing. And this would be, you know, if you wanted to add like glass around that one, for example, you know, copying the same parts here, shift D, separate by selection, and then just, you know, removing your skin modifier, adding in, you know, you could copy the materials and modifiers from this one. So link, or I want to at least link the materials. And we'll link the modifiers too, actually. And then this one, instead of being on the, yeah, edges is what we want. So we'll just bring this down. So now we have another little glass detail there. Um, I could go into adding some like, you know, texture details into the actual um, glass like I did in that, in that one project, but that's just like another way to add, you know, more detail that's not necessarily needed. Um, of course, we always like to turn on our high contrast too so that it looks even better. And we can move this back up so we can see a little better. You know, maybe our house would look better if it wasn't all white. We could think about adding in a, you know, maybe the house is gray or maybe the world is gray. I don't know. Maybe the house stays white and the world goes gray. Just to kind of help it pop a little bit more out the background. Again, thinking about creating sort of a little bit more of a, an interesting composition there. So maybe moving our camera around, thinking about is that the best angle to be looking at it? I think the lighting maybe could, could come around a little bit of a different direction. Something like that looking maybe a little bit more exciting, keeping that shadow sort of centered. Let's get rid of the roughness on this. So I know Andrew Price said you should never turn the specular value down, but I don't think, he, I don't think he's in here. Um, so, turning the specular value all the way down so we have a nice flat background, if that's uh, acceptable with you all, and the roughness up. That's kind of like my favorite material for a background would be just, you know, I usually, in something like this, I want the background to be very much the background. Like, I don't want it catching any light, anything like that. So, um, so making it, yeah, low specular. Sorry, Andrew. Can't see. Can't see it anymore, which I like. Um, connecting that back up. What are we missing here? Definitely the kitchen, whoever mentioned that. That would, be a, that would be a good one to add. You know, you could start thinking about adding in some lights here. I know we don't have a ton of time left, so I guess what, what you know, looking at the 36 Days of Type project that I did and some of the other ones, um, you know, are there other things? This used to always crash Blender is um, editing these area lights in the, in the viewport which before I forget, I did want to say a big huge thank you to any developers that are here for making this beautiful piece of software that I have um, pretty much made my whole life out of. <laughs> um, as I, you know, I had to say that after I said something bad about Blender, so. So we've got a little light in the garage there, you know, maybe that gets the, the little black, <coughs> the black body also that Andrew mentioned, but you can go really quick and cheat with something like that. And, you know, I've done animations too like this where you know, one of the great things about the sky texture is that you can, you know, really create, um, you can create like, you know, daytime, like rotation animations, like super easily, um, you know, changing things like the rotation, obviously. Or you could make like a nighttime render um, if you wanted to just pull that sun like all the way down. And then, you know, you had some, some lights in your scene. Uh, the one danger of, you know, like I did to make the glass really bright is that it will sort of multiply any light so it gets a little bit unrealistic if you're not, um, um, you know, if it is dark, you know, that's gonna sort of multiply the light that's coming through it. 
So you know if you're gonna do a nighttime render, you might wanna drop that back down to like a, a one, but we'll leave it at two. Ooh, that's a, that's a very cool trick in Blender for making glowy stuff, is just to like completely like obliterate the, the value. Um, you can, you know, you can't slide it past one, but you can type in values past one. Um, that's one thing that I've started to do in a lot of my work is like play with the, the value there. Um, okay, so maybe we add just like one little, one more little light up here. Um, but I, I, I asked and then I didn't give anyone a chance to say anything, but what else are we missing here? What should we, what should we add to our little home? Wood. Wood? Oh, a pool. Yes, yes. A pool would be very nice. Um, maybe we make that on the... I actually, I, I, I forgot about the pool. I was like, I should add a pool to my house today. Um, maybe, we, maybe we put it out here, somewhere like that. Maybe we go ahead and add in a loop there so it's not coming into our room we designed. Now this gets a little dangerous with the bevel modifier. I don't know if this is going to work the way I want it to. Maybe if I turn these segments down a little bit, or the size up. No, that gets that gets not good. So we could do that with a boolean. So let's like duplicate this. Now when I'm oh, and I actually do this a lot. You know, if you want to cut like a round hole, but I'm gonna separate that by selection, and then um, just move this up, and then use the solidify we already have on here. And you can do this for windows and stuff. But this could you know very quickly become our boolean object. Uh, we can move it to a new collection called. Bool, which is in all caps, and then we could add a, a boolean to this, and we would select our object, and then let's just assume it's working properly, which it must be, Blender always works very good, and it's working, which is great, but maybe I want to actually use that boolean object as the pool also, again, saving yourself as much work as possible by just like duplicating things. I'm going to move that back into my main collection and then hide the bool again. The bool is, is the pool collection. That's interesting how that, that rhymes. Um, so changing our thickness down, like let's just make this our, we even make it our glass material. But like, okay, let's try copying that material. Link materials. Okay, okay, that's looking decent. Maybe the pool needs to be like under lit or something like that. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna keep kind of messing with this. Does anybody have any questions or like want to talk about anything else? It doesn't necessarily have to be related to this. Um, okay, and I, I saw a hand go up, but I, I told you so. I told you I couldn't I couldn't stop talking. So to get to get rid of this, uh, where you can see through that, you can disable multiple importance, and then we can kind of get the brightness of that lamp without it affecting the actual uh, pool. Now I don't know if any of you watched Curb Your Enthusiasm, but there was an episode where. Uh, Somebody fell in the pool because there wasn't a fence there. It's an American TV show, so I'll, I'll stop talking about that. But I should probably put a fence around the pool. But did you have a question? Or some, somebody raise their hand? Anybody? Oh, no, no questions. I thought somebody was stretching then. Um, so, yeah, th this is our little little house house object. You know, I, you know, this is kind of a fun thing I do regularly. Um, again, you know, thinking back to sort of the purpose of doing something like this, it's just a way to sort of quickly build a composition that it's kind of fun. Um, you know, if you have a little bit more subject matter, like for example, in the 36 Days of Type project, you know, each one has to be a letter, so you can kind of sort of challenge yourself to use these tools to sort of build out those more general shapes. Um, but it's also fun for, you know, just creating little, you know, areas, objects, um, just kind of fun little places you can imagine, living, little, little people living there or something like that. Um, so yeah, love doing this stuff. It's really fun. Brent, do you have a question? Yeah, um, great question, and and yeah, I mean, I, I still sketch regularly. I have a sketchbook. It's full. I, it's very ceremonious when I can, you know, close one, put the little label on it, put it on the shelf, and like open in a fresh one. Um, you know, I'll use that sketchbook for client calls, just writing down notes, but also sketching. But but really, you know, 
I do tend to like to jump pretty much straight into 3D with a lot of projects because, you know, there are tools like this with, you know, solidify modifiers and skin modifiers and, you know, you can build out forms um, incredibly quickly without really, you know, needing to, you know, like in, you know, in school we use more like CAD software and you would never jump straight into CAD software because it's very cumbersome and there's so many like, you know, bevels and fillets and things like that and dimensions and, you know, all that just really kind of slows you down so you would not want to like iterate in CAD software. But, um, you know, that's one thing that I really love about Blender is that it is very lightweight, it's very flexible, there's all these kind of tools at your disposal for quickly building out um, shapes and forms and things like that. So, um, so for me, yeah, I, I, I would jump straight into Blender quite a bit. Um, and, and that also, I kind of use that to sort of drive my design processes. You know, if, if a tool isn't working, then maybe that doesn't need to be part of the design. So, you know, if, if I can't get the modifier working the way I want, then just like go with it, kind of use, um, kind of like letting happy accidents happen is what one of my old professors said about, um, you know, when things like aren't working or something, just kind of lean into that and use that as a way to sort of push something forward. Um, so yeah, I, I, I jump straight into Blender a lot, um, much to some people's dismay probably because I, I could probably plan out designs and things better if I sketched them, but I do still, still sketch a lot, but, um, but a lot of times I do jump straight into, into Blender. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I think that um, I agree with you there that, you know, that's kind of the whole point of a workflow like this is to to just kind of constantly be like looking at what you're creating and sort of um, looking at the image on screen and not thinking so much about, um, you know, you know, what is this wall made of? You know, what should this texture be um, and things like that. But but being able to just use it as a tool to communicate, basically, that that's one of my big things I didn't really talk about earlier. But you know, you know, for me, Blender is really just a good tool for communication, and that, you know, I think that one of the more, one of the powerful things about Blender is that you can basically, there's 3D software in general, it doesn't even have to be Blender, though we all, you know, love Blender. Um, you know, one of the fascinating things about it is that there's really no other tool that allows you to take an idea you have in your head and, you know, most accurate, accurately represent it um, to someone else than, you know, having a powerful understanding of 3D software. So. Um, that is one thing that I think is is really great about Blender and 3D in general is that it can just be a really powerful tool for, you know, taking something that's in your head and getting it out into the world for other people to see. So there's the sunrise on our, our little house with a pole on top of it because the top roof was feeling a little bit empty. How do you manage to not get bumped? Yeah. But you, like, I was watching you, you're just like, all right, I'll move this over here. All right, that looks good. Keep going. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I, I think part of it is just, you know, teaching yourself to purposefully be like that. I, I don't know what background you come from, or, but, you know, for me, coming from a CAD background, everything was dimensioned, everything was this, you know, this needs to be this radius. And when I got in Blender, I was like, I was like, well, how long is that edge? Like, it needs to be an even increment, and the fillet needs to be 0 0.25, not 0 0.24136. But, you know, I, I think the way uh, to see, succeed with that is to just completely disconnect yourself from, you know, the model itself and the fact that what you're creating at the end of the day is just a bunch of pixels. Like, no one's going to go in, well, in some cases, but no one's going to go in and measure those things. And, and that was one thing that took me a really long time to get over coming from you know, CAD background in particular was like, how do, how do I let go of all that and realize that what I'm creating is, is really just an image or at the end of the day it's going to be a video or something like that. So, um, so yeah, just, just, you know, kind of purposefully just, yeah, just, just let go and like move on. If, you, if you're not liking something, 
I'm like with projects like this all the time, I'll, I'll get to this point and then just, you know, never save, just delete the file and just do it again. Because that's, that's kind of the purpose with something like this is it should not be, you don't want to feel invested in it. You don't want it to be something that you're, um, you know, becomes your baby. It's just like you need to just, just do it and do it again and do it again. And, and that's kind of, I guess, the, the theme I was trying to get at with this um, presentation was basically that just, just like, you know, it, it's just a thing to get your brain moving. And at the end of the day, you, you know, you might have a cool image. If you don't, it doesn't matter. But um, that we're not really making anything for anyone here. It's just, you know, a fun way to use the tools that Blender has and, um, you know, create in a different way, um, just like you would with sketching or anything else. It's just, it's just another tool. It's another way to just get kind of stuff in your head out into something that you and other people can can look at and um, and you can you know really quickly build large volumes of work doing things like this um, and you know you know you, you're not too attached to any one thing but at the end of the day it's really fun to look and see like you know maybe this house isn't a, a masterpiece I don't think anyone's gonna go build that house but if you do this a hundred times or like in the case of the 36 days of type project you know when you do all those then then you have this body of like small experiments, and that in itself is is a, a substantial project that you can be proud of. So, um, you know, the consistency, playing around, all that kind of contributes to just yeah, Blender being sort of a fun fun tool. Yeah. It kind of depends. Um, like so, sometimes you know something like this might be used in a more of like a background animation. Um, you know, really like I did a project recently. I can I think let it play here on Vimeo. This was actually for my sister-in-law. She has like a virtual gallery, but you know, a lot of times using the same like solidify modifier and stuff like that to create like the, these all these buildings on in this little presentation are. It, it's just like it literally made the exact same way. Just get inside the space and add some nice textures on top of it. Um, but, but it, it, I mean, so, so using it for like a background in a product presentation, um, you know, a, lo a lot of times when I'm kind of art directing a product image, you know, I want shadows to fall a certain way or like hit one part of a product, but not the other part. And the way I do that is just by building like this crazy looking structure around it. Um, you know, there's a lot of product animation that I've done in, the background is just like this crazy world with like walls going everywhere. And it's because I'm just kind of tweaking things to let the light fall certain ways because no one's going to see that. Um, but other cases, like in the case of Gensler, which is an architecture firm, um, in that case it was a more practical application of like, um, you know, we needed to sort of represent spaces, but the spaces were not designed. They literally gave me a spreadsheet of like we need a place where someone scans their avatar into the metaverse. We need a hologram. We, this is where people get their VR headsets. Complete just spreadsheet, and they're like, turn that into a space. And you know, the only way to do that is to just have you know no idea of like you know what you want to do. So, um, so that that would be another more practical example. Um, but this, you know, something like this is built the exact same way. Well, thank you all. I think we're about one, one last question. Yeah. So I was wondering, when you do realistic product design, so it needs to be uh, real world skill, it needs to be um, structurally sound and stuff, do you feel like Blender is the right tool for that? Or would you just say, I'd rather do design in Blender, but when it comes to actually creating something that we can produce physically, I would hop on over to like AutoCAD or whatever, SolidWorks. Yes. So the one area, I love Blender with the bottom of my heart, but the one area that I would not advise you to use Blender is if you are going to be creating a physical product, um, with the exception of like 3D printing. Um, so you can 3D print from Blender and I suppose get relative accuracy, but if you're going to... Oh, God. Um, this is like another example of like more product work for a Kickstarter with a guy I worked on, but yeah, if, if it's going to be a physical product that needs to be cut by a CNC machine or something like that, Blender's just not the, I can't wait till Blender CAD comes out, but, um, but yeah, you know, when you really need to be super dimensionally accurate, building it in other software. But again, thinking about the fact that at the end of the day, you're creating pixels on screen, a JPEG image. Um, you know, I work with industrial design studios. They send me CAD files all the time. So, you know, for something like that, then they can send me 
stuff that was built in CAD, I can bring it into Blender, know that everything's dimensionally accurate, um, and you know that, that works fine for creating renderings and things like that, but you wouldn't want to start in Blender necessarily and then try to, I had a nightmare project like that one time, I told this designer from the get-go, I was like, no, these cannot be the final design files, we're prototyping in Blender, and then sure enough, like, you know, a couple months later, they're like, can you send us the step files? And I'm like, there is no step files. I said, this is like, you have the JPEG image, and that is it. Like, there's, I can send you a front view, uh, but they need to be rebuilt. So that is a, an area that Blender lacks. Um, this is another similar project. You know, I set up a file with a, you know, sort of base lighting environment textures, and you know, created a bunch of chairs in the shapes of A's, B's, C's. I didn't get all the way through the 36 here, but. Um, but yeah, this was another one following the same, same process, just fun, you know, individually, they're not huge projects, but, you know, when you create a lot of them, it kind of becomes something that, that you can be, you can be proud of. So it's a good way to get something you're proud of while creating a lot of things that you're not proud of. Um, this was a downloaded texture for the velvet texture and the wood. Well, thanks everyone for coming. It was nice to, uh, yeah.